Greetings from the Open Distance Learning Program. Thank you for accepting our invitation to the course, Teaching Online Facilitation. This course is sponsored by the Office of the Vice President for Academic Affairs and the four colleges of the Higher Education Unit. Our trainers are three women who have successfully completed a training of trainers on online facilitation from the World Bank Institute, namely Tessa Oliva, Malu Toral de Harabe, and Sheila Dinkong the course manager. Sally Lakbay is our technical assistant. You are one of 35 trainees who have taken on the responsibility of providing quality learning experiences to learners of the 21st century. Learners of the 21st century are, or those born after 1982 are digital natives. According to Michael Rogers, these learners by age 21 would have sent 200,000 emails, watched 20,000 hours of television, spent 10,000 hours on a cell phone, but spent only 5,000 hours reading. This shows that technology is the center of their learning and interactions with information. They are multitaskers who use sound and images to convey content whenever possible. They will look at the internet as the universal source of information. They crave for interactivity, have strong visual spatial skills, the weak at reading skills. They tend towards inductive discovery, look for fast response times, which may lead to short at attention spans. Given the characteristics of our first 21st century learners and the surge of information and communication technologies for education, the role of higher education has changed from that of providing students with a vast collection of specific information to that of making connections, thinking through issues, and solving problems. Thus, 21st century technology supports higher education with digital tools to connect with facilitators, educators, learners, and collaborators within and outside the school. Given this educational scenario, we believe that constructivism provides educators with sound theoretical and methodolo methodological frameworks, as well as the practical applications for learning through digital tools. According to constructivists, the goal of learning processes is meaning making. It requires articulation and reflection on what we know. For Donald Norman, meaning is the understanding that we derive from the processes of articulation and reflection. It is a reflective form of knowledge. The application of that meaning in real-world practice is what Norman refers to as experiential knowledge. Both experiential and reflect reflective knowledge emerge from our interactions with the world, and both are required for performing most real-world tasks. Therefore, according to Leib and Wenger, educators need to embed learning in real-world situations in which learners can function as a part of a community of practitioners helping to solve real-world problems. David Jonathan says that, consequently, the role of the teacher shifts from creating prescriptive learning situations to developing environments that engage learners and require them to construct the knowledge that is most meaningful to them. The principles by which those learning environments may be built focus on four general system attributes, context, construction, collaboration, and conversation. Constructivist environments engage learners in knowledge construction through collaborative activities that embed learning in a meaningful context and through reflection on what has been learned through conversation with other learners. As Maddox, Johnson, and Willis observed, students need to learn in a social collaborative manner. Thus, using technology to document, share, and learn is beneficial. Learners construct knowledge in their own minds and the process is facilitated by collaboration among learners and with the teacher. 
An important aspect of con constructivism is that out-of-school experience needs to be related to the student's school experience. Because 21st century learners are digital natives, their social interactions are increasingly becoming wired. Thus, the use of digital tools for academic work is now becoming the norm. Evangelista Baybay and Lincoln recently discovered that Miriam College students not only use Facebook for peer com communication and formation, but also for learning outside the school. Therefore, today's teachers and facilitators have to ensure that the use of digital tools in academic work provides a good learning experience. According to Ismond and Zigan, a good learning experience is one in which a learner can master new knowledge and skills, critically examine as assumptions and beliefs, and engage in an interrogating collaborative quest for wisdom and personal holistic development. Thus, to be able to provide quality learning experience to 21st century learners, our role as a teacher and facilitator in the blended or online setting changes dramatically. According to Jonathan, we must be able to guide learners as they engage in open-ended activities, but more importantly, be able to help learners establish and maintain transformative learning conversations about these activities. To do so requires us to establish a culture of communication about matters of substance in the regular and online classrooms that include us as both participant and facilitator. As a participant, we bring in our expertise in the content area and in the learning process that we can share with students at appropriate moments. As a facilitator, we must bring an expertise in fostering and even guiding learning conversations that ideally involve a diversity of participants that includes not only the students but members of re relevant communities. Therefore, this online training hopes to provide us with the necessary knowledge, attitudes, and skills to make this change. For the next six weeks, we'll be working together as a community of learners, guided by our ABLE trainers, as we strive to be able to, first, describe online learning and understand the different underlining principles of this approach, Second, identify the different components and processes in facilitating online learning and explain the different phases in the delivery of an online course, including the tasks and roles within each phase. Third, discovering, sorry, demonstrate enabling attitudes regarding online learning and learn strategies for the delivery of an online course. And fourth, develop facilitation skills and techniques through simulation and create an online delivery plan including student activities in the MC e-learning platform as a course project. Therefore, together let us na navigate our learning experiences on teaching online facilitation in cyberspace. Maraming maraming salamat!